offer affliction to and enlighten to the Buddha, the Dharma, the Sangha, by my accumulations and practice of giving so forth, may I become a Buddha to benefit all such human beings. I go for affliction to and enlighten to the Buddha, the Dharma, the Sangha, by my accumulations and the practice of giving so forth, may I become a Buddha to benefit all such human beings. I go for affliction to and enlighten to the Buddha, the Dharma, the Sangha, by my accumulations and the practice of giving so forth. Ripening of the 
the rapture of the karmas, effects of the karma, rapture of the effects of the karma, um, with the other lives, other lives meaning not the immediate life, not this life. We get three. Of the three, um, the one which one which ripens within the same lifetime, that is extremely powerful. Very powerful ones ripen within the very lifetime. And then the um, mediocre ones will ripen the immediate next life. And the less powerful ones will ripen in the other lifetimes. Okay, this is the understanding. So this example of the face, you, you are here, you are here and your face is the reflection of the, your face on a mirror that is very immediate. This is an example of the ripening of the karma, ripening of the karma, ripening of the effect of the karma within this very lifetime. It is like the appearance of the reflection of a face on the surface of a well polished mirror. The face has not shifted on the surface. There is no essence there, there is no objective essence there which shifts from the face to the mirror, but because of dependence on these, the fact is intact, the face is not shifted onto the surface of the mirror, but because there is no deficiency of requisite causing conditions, the face nonetheless appears there. This is purely dependent origination. Okay, number two. Similarly, there is nobody at all who transmigrates from hereafter, hereafter death, and is born elsewhere. And yet, because of, there is no deficiency of requisite causing conditions, the result of karma nonetheless manifests. It is like, now the second example, it is like how the orb of the moon travels at a distance of 42,000 yojanas above earth. So the point is that the moon is up there, whatever distance, like the, what is given here is 42,000 yojanas. It is matter. If there is a specific distance from the moon to the earth, so the moon is up there to this distance, and where the water body is there, the reflection will be instantly formed. The reflection moon will be formed. So this, the moon and the reflection, the distance is much more than the distance between your face and the mirror, right? So that is the example, that is the example of the ripening of the effects of the karma in the immediate next life. This is the second example. It is like how the orb of the moon travels at a distance of 42,000 yojanas above earth, where the moon is, yet its reflection nonetheless appears in small vessels filled, filled with water. It is not that the moon moves from its position and enters into small vessels filled with the water, yet because there is no deficiency of requisite causes and conditions, of the moon nonetheless appears there, of the reflection of the moon appears there. It is not that the moon up there moves down. Just by the factors, the moon up there and the distance, the water body down there and the light there, all these factors come into contact then by developing these factors that the reflection of the moon in the water body appears. This is how the say from you we accumulate karma here, positive karma, negative karma, whatever. And then the, the next life, there's no there is no the objective self or objective karma traveling to the next life, but because of the factors intact, then the results manifest in the next life. <clears throat> Uh, third paragraph, likewise that there is no body at all who transmigrates from here after death and is born elsewhere and yet because okay, there is no, no body at all means there is no objective entity there at all who transmigrates from here after death and is born elsewhere and yet because there is no deficiency of requisite causing conditions the result of karma nonetheless manifests. It's like how a fire ignites from the assemblage of its um, the, okay, uh, requisite causes and conditions and not when deficient of its um, the requisite causes and conditions. Fire ignites from the assemblage of the requisite cause. So the fire, so how the fire comes in being, how you, in those days, in the olden days, how the fire is, the, how do you create the fire? Together then? And then you light fire. Oh, this is this is more modern this is modern way. Yes. 
overall speaking, the, the world system they remain more static. One world system goes through the process of degenerating time, and other world systems are newly coming into being, and others are biting. Average is static. So the question is, can we go to other world systems? Of course, yes. We can go. Yeah. Okay. This digression. What is the main question? Yes, Ramji. Yes, Ramji. Uh, is it possible that even right now people will be traveling between different world systems? It's like people who are like maybe some other human form or the formless villains or. Oh, yes, of course. Form, formless? No, this is very high level. Form, formless, they are very high level. It's not like us. Uh, whereas, whereas the, say the, the gods, gods in the desire realm, gods in the desire realm, even the subhumans with the karmic miracle power, they can travel so easily. And then the, what do you call it, the hardo beings, hardo being spirits, they travel unobstructed so easily, yeah, so fast. Okay. One question Krishna we had in discussion to or oh, at least I thought I heard it was said and anyone you should answer it is what does it mean that dependent origination or dependent arising is the same meaning as emptiness but they are not identical? Oh yes, yes. Emptiness and dependent origination these two mean the same. Meaning that like what Dr. Amit just said, impermanence and product. These two mean the same. What is me meaning? These two mean the same. These two synonymous means whatever is, whatever is, whatever qualifies emptiness qualifies dependent origination. Whatever qualifies dependent origination qualifies the emptiness. Whatever has the characteristic of emptiness should have the characteristic of dependent origination. Whatever has the characteristic of dependent origination should have the characteristic of emptiness. His meaning of these two are the same meaning. But yet yeah, these two are not identical. Because one is a positive phenomenon, one is a negative phenomenon. And also one is permanent and one, one is permanent, one is impermanent. Oh no. Both are permanent. So dependent arising is permanent. Dependent origination per se is permanent. Uh -huh. Arising and dependent, not arising not. dependent origin is matter of English translation. Okay. The same. Pratit It's a permanent permanent. permanent. And it's not conventional truth. Of course, it's conventional yes. truth. Yes, dependent, origi dependent origination is conventional truth. The emptiness is the ultimate truth. The question still remains why emptiness is the ultimate truth and not the dependent origination is the ultimate truth. This question. Right? Are you good? Yes, Jack, you have a question? Yes, Jay can ask on behalf of Baba. In the, the verse this morning about independent origination, there's no ceasing, no rising, etc. Are we talking about emptiness or are we talking about dependent origination when we say no ceasing, no Both. rising, no coming? Both. What is dependent origination is empty of independent existence. Empty of independent existence means there's no independent arising, no independent ceasing. No independent annihilation, permanence, coming, going, oneness, selflessness. So all these eight characteristics, they are empty of independent existence. When you experience that, when you experience that, then the what mind, which mind experiences that? That is the ultimate analysis. When ultimate analysis experiences the non-existence of these eight characteristics objectively, this mind is experiencing emptiness. In the experience, ceasing, arising, ceasing of the, the sorrow, mental agitation, all dissolve. Then we experience peace. So, and dependent origination means dependent origination was as a side. Emptiness of independent existence. What do you mean by emptiness of independent existence? 
emptiness of independent arising, independent ceasing, independent annihilation, independent permanence, independent oneness, differentness, and so, so it is basically saying, when it says no ceasing, that's dependent origination, but we're really not saying no ceasing, we're saying no independent ceasing. Yes, yes, no yes. Yes, yes, yes. Yep. Yes. Uh, the sixty nine uh, last paragraph, which is here, what is the occurrence? It's not the definition, it's giving us the more information. It's not the definition. Definition means okay, there are many things extra information, meaning, definition, they all have different meanings. Yeah, uh, first, first, uh, the first link. First, no. Emptiness uh, of permanent unitary independence. Okay, this this ignorance. Yeah. Is it that? Uh, let's say ignorance is not, ignorance which views which views permanent unitary independence self. This ignorance has this ignorance per se has many layers. But what is the All are there. All, uh, not necessarily all, okay. okay, for you, for your information, say, of the five levels of selflessness, opposite of the, of the all five levels of selfhood, permanent unity and independent self, autonomous substantial self, external self, and the true, true, true self without the hearing deep, okay, true self, and then the inherent self, of these five, this ignorance, this ignorance, the first link, ignorence. Okay, Arjuna is that, Arjuna, you talked about, you mentioned about acquired and innate. What do you mean about acquired and innate? It's referring to the grasping. No, it doesn't matter. What do you understand by the acquired and innate? Explain this to all of us. Acquired means something learned. Acquired means, acquired ignorance means ignorance which you did not bring from a past life. When you were born childhood, you do not have this. And then you slowly, you go into, you know, let's say the, some, the philosophical schools, your teachers, your parents, then they teach you something. Oh, you are a Buddhist. Oh, I'm a Buddhist. Right? Day one, you are not a Buddhist. You are not Hindu, you are not Muslim, you are not Jain, you are not non-believer. Right? But then later on your family moves, oh, you are a Buddhist. You are a Hindu, you are a Muslim, you are a Jain, oh, I'm Jain. These are all acquired, they drawn. This is likewise ignorance, ignorance also, there's an acquired version, which you acquire later on. After being born, then you acquire later on, this is acquired. What do you mean by innate? Innate is what you get from the previous life. Innate is the spontaneously arising, spontaneously, it comes to your mind spontaneously. For example, who taught the children, young children, age one, age two, attachment to the chocolate, or attachment to the, the uh, to the what, to the toys, and then to fight, to show anger to somebody who you know snatches the toy. Who taught them? Nobody taught them. They brought it from the past time. That is innate. So ignorance here, the first thing, ignorance, it should be always innate, not the acquired. This ignorance. So, because it should be in, uh, innate of the five, the first one, the first one is always the first one, which is the ignorance, misperceiving, impermanent self to be permanent. That is always acquired. Acquired. So here, this ignorance, in this ignorance, that one, to see the self to be permanent, that is like a, that is like, what do you call it? Auxiliary, ancillary. Ancillary meaning? The, the real one is the acquire the innate grasping of the self to be real. And to reinforce that, then philosophically you learn that all oh, the self is objective real, so this self is permanent, you learn this. So that becomes like the, the, the aid to reinforce your innate self grasping things. So here, what exactly is this ignorance? Um, this is the the last fifth one, number five.
precisely is number five. Then all others, the is a permanent and so forth, they are to enrich or reinforce this appearance. Then the, the schools, if the, the, the one of you raised this question yesterday, no, two days ago, about the four schools, the four schools, four different schools, um, how do they identify the ignorance? Do they identify ignorance in the same way or different ways? Different ways. Personally, we will identify this ignorance as misperceiving the fifth one. Then the Svata, the Mika, and the lower schools. All the lower schools will identify this ignorance as the number two. Except for Prasangika, all the other schools, the Buddhist schools, will identify this ignorance as the ignorance is perceiving the number two. Okay. So again, this requires a little bit of study. Okay, that's good. Yes, Ruiji. This is a really uh, funny mistake. But yes. Okay, 12 links of dependent origination. Okay, let's say, let's say, let's say. Um, emptiness and dependent origination, if these two are equivalent, then when we see dependent origination, is it not that we should, see, we should also see emptiness? If the answer is yes, we have to see. When you see 12 links of dependent origination, do you see emptiness? This question. Yes, no. When you see two links of dependent origination, how the two links operate? Do you also see emptiness? No. Yes? No. I challenge you no. Okay, how do you say no reasons? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. How do you say yes? <laughs> okay. Okay, what do you say? What do you say no? Because it's in a conventional uh, it's in a conventional uh, it's a top level of dependent on the subtle level. And it's also more on the conventional truth. Uh, no, that is this matter. Okay, I want more answer. I want to... Uh, okay, uh, Raviji and others. Okay, who are they? Dilshad, Ravi, Dr. Anandaji. Okay. And who else? Who said that? The yes. Okay, this is we all listen to the others who give the answers. Okay, the, um, the Shantila is saying that the what top and what you say something. The three levels are three levels the most uh, process level. Causal, okay, causal. on the 12 things of dependent origination is the, the dependent origination which is the grossest level. So to understand this, you only understand the gross level of dependent origination for which Understand the emptiness is not required. Okay, anyone else? Okay, those who said yes, do you agree with Chandila or do you don't agree with Chandila? The question is. Okay, meaning that the dependent notion is. Okay, Chandila, you explain it. There are three levels of dependent origination. According to the grossness or uh, yes, yes. So the top level is causal, that things are dependent on causal and condition. The next second level is the whole is dependent on past and the subtlest level is they're dependent on mere imputation. Mm -hmm. And from what I thought, dependent on merely being imputed is actually self grasping. Uh, not seeing that is actually self grasping ignorance and not the dependent origination of causality. Okay, so the, what Shadila is saying is that of the three levels of dependent origination, when you see the dependent origination of the whole, the results dependence on causes, the first one, the process one. When you see that, it does not entitle you to understand emptiness. To understand emptiness, you must understand the, the subtlest level of dependent origination, which is dependent origination of the Dependence on mere mental designation, mere mental imputation. That uh, you have to understand the third level. Okay, how many agree with this? Yes. Ah? 
Won't you just agree? Why not? How? Uh, the question was, I think, the third level of, to, to understand emptiness, it should be the third level of the One has to understand the third level of the dependent position, which is dependent origination, dependence on mere mental designation. It's not emptiness. It is not emptiness, but it is the to when you understand this, you understood emptiness. So that is asserted by a single Yes, yes. Not at the school. So that means <laughs> okay. that's the there's more scholarly, right? From the okay, other schools, what about other schools' presentation? So what we are speaking about is from the point of view of the reality. The reality means according to Sangha. And one that may disagree with that, the reality may not be Prasangiga, this would be your debate. But the reality, what we say reality is the Prasangiga's view. Yeah. From Prasangiga's view, you agree? The ultimate definition of emptiness is. Okay, very good. Anybody else? Yes. I have a question. If you will repeat the question, because I'm not sure that her answer answered the question. No, the question is from there, not to her. Well, no, the question was, can you see, at least I thought I heard the question, can you see emptiness and dependent arising at the same time? Well, that no, this is not the question. The question is, right. emptiness and dependent origination, if these two are equivalent, meaning that if these two mean the same, anybody who understands dependent origination should also understand emptiness. I understand. Okay. If you say yes, anybody who understands 12 links of dependent origination should also understand emptiness. Because to understand 12 links of dependent origination, this is understanding of dependent origination. Then you should understand emptiness as well. Is it necessary? And many said no necessary. Because this understanding of 12 links of dependent origination falls under the understanding of dependent origination of the first level, the crossest level. Okay, anyone who disagrees with Shandila? Okay, then we have to continue. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> the fire. The fire. Of the how we how we light the fire. Okay, let's say in olden times, we just rub to you strike the two stones and then the spark comes out and then what, how does it do? How does it happen? Spark comes out? By the way, you have no experience. No, no experience. Huh? Huh? Sandeep, she has no experience. You put something that easily ignites at you. Put something which can easily catch the fire. Not like this, you like this fire will disappear. Right? Even Sandeep, she... No, Sandeep, she, you know, it's not from this generation. Right? Okay, it's not like, like this. So, initially, don't do like this. This is only later stage. Right? First, you put something which catches fire, easily catches fire, next to the spark. Like cotton? Leaves. 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 So although Wangti is from, not from that generation, but he has a very holistic view, right? Okay, husk, something which can catch fire very easily. Okay, so the husk, the strikers, the person's hands, oxygen, all this coming together, is rise to the fire. Okay, but strike once, the fire comes or not, guaranteed or not, not guaranteed, you have to, see, you have to strike two times, three times, four times. It's not, it's not certain. So, some karmas, some karmas, they may not get the results directly. So, the, 
their results can be, some karmas can be uncertain. Like the striking and then fire may come, may not come. So this is an example of uncertain karma. Okay, no, not the remote controls, remote controls in some places. Some remote controls are like the definite karma. You press it and it works, instant it works. I was so fascinated. Because I was frustrated with, you know, I was pressed, I have one remote control in my, hand, in my house. I have to press it so many times. Sometimes I become so desperate to go to the actual machine to press it there. But it doesn't work there. Okay. Um, in paragraph 3, likewise, that there is nobody at all who transmigrates from here up to death and is born elsewhere. And yet, because there is no deficiency and deficiency of requisite causes and conditions, requisite causes and conditions, the result of karma nonetheless manifests. It is like how a fire ignites from the assemblage of its requisite causes and conditions. Here's this example of the uncertain karma. Uncertain karma giving us to the results. And not when deficient of its requisite causes and conditions. In the same way, although things are devoid of owner, owner meaning, okay, are the like earlier owner, ownership, owner, meaning that say you in the aspect, the self in the form of the identified to be identified as the the, the creator, as the agent, owner, devoid of ownership. Devoid ownership meaning that okay. Uh, this is mine. I have the ownership of this house. Mine. The first one is I. I am the. I am the agent. Then mine. I'm the objectively existing agent. Then mine. Object which belongs to me. Who is the objectively existing? Devoid of ownership. Ungraspable. Okay. Ungraspable meaning that graspable. Think that okay, the I can control this car anytime I, I want it. I can let's see, I can use this car anytime I like it, which means that I have the control over this, I have the grasp over this. Whereas there's no such an entity, such an entity object real there to be grasped, ungraspable. Then space like, of course, space like meaning that objectively it is empty. So this so is what I explained earlier, it's just repeating again. And then there's just the mark of the illusion. So if nothing really from if space like from the object is nothing there like space, then what is that? That is like illusion. They do exist. How? Purely subjective. This is very important. What when we discuss when did we discuss that? Not the first session, second session, third session, we discussed that. That the Things undeniably appear to your mind. Okay, look at the other person. You looked at the other person. Okay, somebody appeared to your mind, appeared to your consciousness. Yes, no. Undeniably, the, there's something there that appeared to my consciousness. Let us begin from there. Undeniably, an object appeared to my consciousness. One. Number two, what appears, how does it appear to you? It appears as though like there's something there from the object or not from the object. How does it appear? As though something is there from the object. Okay, now you go towards the object. Number one, undeniably things appear. Don't forget it, number one. Undeniably things appear to my mind, number one. Number two, the way it appears to you when you go towards the object to explore whether it exists. The way we go to this object, you see it's just a bunch of atoms. It's just a bunch of atoms. The person is not there. What, what appears to your mind when you go to this object, it's not really there. From the object, it's not there. Number, number two, from the object, it's not there. Number three, from this, what we deduce is that what is that then? Something appeared to me. What is that? So the object is not there, but it undeniably appeared to me. You're getting it? What is that? 
object which is not there, remove from the object. What is left now? What is left now? Only the appearance is left. Only the appearance is left. You get it? And appearances from the subject or from the object? From the subject. So therefore everything is mere appearance. Everything is mere appearance. Because everything is mere appearance, respect the appearance. Because everything is appearance, respect the appearance. Because law of karma is operating on the mere appearance. We have to respect the law of karma. And where the law of karma is operating, we have to respect that. Respect that meaning that we are not to deny this. Because the law of karma is undeniably operating. Where it is operating? On the mere appearance level. So therefore we have to respect it. We have not to deny the mere appearance. That appearance is so important. On this appearance everything is operating. This meaning of everything is operating subjectively. Appearance meaning is happening on your mind. Which is subject. So therefore everything is subjective. This is very important. Number one, undeniable things appear to you. Number one. What is number two? Hey. Yes, you are No. Number one, everything undeniable appears. Number one. Then, as we move towards the object, we realize that from the object nothing is there. From the object nothing is there. Number two. Number three. Number three. Therefore, therefore it is, no, 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 therefore it is mere appearance undeniable. From the object nothing is there, therefore it is a mere appearance. What is really there then? Everything, just the appearance. Just the appearance. And the appearance is purely subjective. You're getting it? It's just appearance. So everything is operating on this appearance level. Therefore respect the appearance. Don't undermine the appearance. Don't say it's just appearance. Don't say like this. Appearance is where all the functionality is operating. So efficaciously. And it's very powerful also. Appearance, don't, don't mix up the two things. When we say it's just a mere appearance, people see that as mere imagination. Imagination and the mere appearance, these two are different. In the imagination, law of karma does not operate. Law of karma operates on the mere appearance. So respect the appearance, no need to respect the imagination. Right? Imagination and appearance, these two are different. If you see the appearance, mere appearance as imagination, you understand that mere appearance is nihilism. You're getting it? Okay. At the last, at the page number 74, paragraph 4. In the same way, although things are devoid of honor, devoid of ownership, ungraspable, space like, and the nature is the mark of illusion, it's just mere appearance, nothing from object, like illusion. Like illusion? Before the illusion is what? Space like. Space like meaning from the object is empty. Then, then what is that? What are all these phenomena? They are like illusion-like. They are all mere appearance, illusion-like. Illusion, because there is no deficiency of requisite causes and conditions, the seed of consciousness born of karma and afflictions will nonetheless produce the sprout of name and form within whichever mother's womb one will take rebirth. Oh. oh. Yes, yes, yes. Um, form within whichever mother's womb one will take rebirth through. Thus is the conditional relation in inner dependent arising to be seen. Okay. Here, inner dependent arising, the 12 links. Here, the inner dependent arising is to be seen in terms of five aspects. Okay, which we have done earlier, five aspects, the way we did for the outer dependent origination. Which five? As not permanent, as not discontinuous, as not involved in transmigration, as the formation of a large result from a small cause, and as a continuity of similar time. How is not permanent? It is not permanent because the final, the final aggregates at death are one thing, and those at birth are another. Permanent meaning what? It's not permanent meaning, it's not unchanging, it's changing. One thing, and those at birth are another. That is, the final aggregates at death are not the ones at birth, and yet 
only when the final aggregates of death cease do the aggregates of birth arise. How is that not discontinuous? It is not, it is not discontinuous because discontinuous meaning what? That the see the, the death and then next birth. These two are like two independent entities, not dependent on each other. Discontinuous. For example, like okay, um the Say, if I give, okay, let's see. These two are two independent entities, two independent with respect to each other. I keep it like this from distance, from distance, you will see as well, like this is one entity. Then also, no, it is not one entity, it's two, two entities. You're getting it? These two are two entities. These two are totally disconnected. These two are disconnect. These two are not. These two don't share continuum. You remove one. This is not affected. These two are two separate, distinct entities. Likewise, birth, death and the birth. Death and birth are these two continuous flow, or these two are two different and two distinct entities. This meaning two independent entities. Huh? Death, only when the death happens, only when the death happens, then the birth occurs. If the death doesn't happen, the birth will never occur, which means that these two are dependent on each other. These two are not like these two candies. These two candies, they are independent from each other. Even the blue one, you remove the blue one, the yellow one is intact. It does not affect the yellow one. Even if you remove the yellow one, blue one is intact. Whereas, if you don't remove the if, you, if the death doesn't happen, if the death doesn't happen, the birth will not happen. It's going to affect these two are related, very closely related. So therefore, these two are, these two are, there, there's, a, there's a continuum, there's a continuum there, these two are related. Okay, these two are not two disconnect things, birth and the death. Second paragraph, how is it not discontinuous? It is not discontinuous because the aggregates of birth do not arise from the final aggregates at death, either when they have already ceased or when they have not yet ceased, like the beam of a scale tilting from up to down, and the aggregates at birth arise precisely when the final aggregates at death have ceased. Like the, the two sides of the balance. Two sides of the balance. When the one goes down, the other one automatically goes up. If the other one goes, doesn't go down, will not, the other side will not go up. Right? Okay. How does it not involve transmigration? It does not. What is that? Anybody who likes to share a little bit about this? How does it not involve transmigration? What do you understand by this? This already came three times, three times already. Huh? The There's no objective substance there which is moving from one place to another. For example, what we say is that okay, I came from Delhi. So before I was here, I was in the aeroplane. Before I was in the aeroplane, I was in the airport. Before I was in the airport, I was in my house. So from the house, somebody went out. From very vernacular, ordinary people's thinking, non philosophical thinking, somebody goes out. Without that person there, without that person there, then the one would go out, you know? So that person goes out to the airport. From the airport, go to the aeroplane. Then came to the Mumbai airport. This is how there's somebody by brain moving. All the places change, but the person remains the same. Okay, this is what gives us a feeling of objective, solidified essence there. So the Buddha is saying that there is no such objective essence there. One of the beautiful examples given is like the, the banana the trunk. Banana, banana plant trunk. So what is that like? Is from the outside, it sees the soul and it's very strong. You can't inside, there's nothing there, it's just hollow. Right? So, from what we see, we see a soul like this, an independent objective existence self there, which migrates from one place to another. But you split the six elements, such a self which, which, to which we smile, it's not really there. Right? Okay. Okay, again, look at the other person. Can everybody smile here? Okay, so the same person, just imagine, the same person you split into six elements, will you still smile? 
six, six elements. It's quite long. It's quite scary, right? If you see the same person with the six elements separate, separated, you will not smile. It's very scary to look at. If one smile is good, we are seeing something. We see something as so object real. Unless you are smiling because of purpose. If there's purpose, is the Buddha's way of smiling. If there's no purpose, still it automatically makes you smile. Means you are seeing objectively real person there. Okay. Um, okay. Um, we are reading from page 75, third paragraph. How does it not involve transmigration? It does not involve transmigration because beings from different classes of existence bring about daily birth in a common form of birth. Meaning that somebody who dies as a deva, let's say as a deva, as a god, from the god realm, somebody dies, somebody takes birth as a human being. When it's human physical form, physical form, what is the, the god and goddess physical form there? The previous one. These are very different. It's not that the God came on the planet Earth. No. If there's a substance there, then the, the one who is here should be the God. But there's no, you know, the entity, the same entity which is coming here. It's, everything is different. But by we have dependence. We have a sense of dependence of multiple factors. We have a sense of oh, I in the past life I was a um, God. In this life, I'm a human being. So there's the one common feature known as the eye, which spreads across the, the, the different birds. But this is all because of the subjective imputation. From logic, nothing's there really there as an essence. Okay. <clears throat> how does it entail, uh, paragraph 4, how does it entail the formation of a large result from a small cause? The ripening of a large result is experienced from having a performed of minor action. But karma, karma, like with a seed, one apple, tiny one, the tiny one, a single tiny apple seed can give rise to thousands of apples. Thousands of apples with thousands of seeds there. One tiny seed can give rise to big, multiple results. Likewise, one tiny karma. A karma can give rise to innumerable results. One karma that we do can give rise to 500 lifetimes, 1000 lifetimes of birth, 1000 rebirths. Because just one act, for example, one good act, one very powerful good act can give rise to like thousands of virtuous rebirths. One, one negative karma can give rise to thousands of rebirth in the lower realms. So this is how small seed can give rise to big and multiple results. Okay. Um, paragraph 4. How does it entail the formation of a large result from a small cause? The ripening of a large result is experienced from, a, from having performed a minor action. Thus, it entails the formation of a large result from a small cause. It involves a continuity of similar type because the ripening of an action is experienced um, precisely according to the action performed. Meaning that ripening, say you do good karma, then the effect is going to be a happiness. Happiness is what is similar, similar in nature with the positive karma. And suffering is what is a similar nature with the negative karma. So we are, can't expect to do negative karma and to expect happiness coming. Okay, Venerable Shariputra, whosoever sees with perfect wisdom this dependent arising, perfectly taught by the Bhagavan, as it actually is, as always and forever, without life force, life force meaning that the life force this is the, the life force, how we call it life. Okay, by the way, what is life? What is life? Okay, do you have a life? How many have life? We all have life. What do you mean by life? What do you understand by life? Six senses with the consciousness. 
Okay, six senses with consciousness. If you don't have a six sense, then you don't know life. Some people do not have, you know, the faculty, what sense powers. Some people, in the form formless realm, form form the okay. Let's say in the formless realm, the six senses are not there, but they have a life. And even with human beings, you know, human beings, it's not that everybody has these six senses. What is life? Okay, the breathing is interesting. To be aware. To be aware. To be aware is life. That's interesting. To be aware is life. So when you are fast asleep, you have no life? Same as same Huh? Same as same Why? Why same thing is known as life? Why? Huh? Same as mine. Your mind is life? No, because they have no mind. My question, what is life? I don't know, ask what is the reason for you to say that you have a life? This is not my question. My question, what is life? So some say the Sadiq just said, is the breathing is the life. Of mind and form. Huh? Mind and form. Name okay, and form. Yes. most of you will think of philosophical answers, right? Huh? Birth and life, death and death. Birth and death, yes, what's life? That is life. Being born and then there. Samsara is life. Spending time. So at the moment is birth? No. Chibira, at the moment is not birth. It's not death. No. That there's life still, right? In between, in between also there's life. In between the birth and death is also life. So what is life? Yes, there's a lot. Okay, human life. That's a human life. Human life. Life of a sentient being. No, no, no. I'm not talking about what are the proof of life. This is not my question. My question is, what is life? Are you asking conventionally? Of course, conventionally. I'm just asking. Of course, of course. Of course, ultimately, you know, if I ask, it's terrible. Okay, Shweta? I can write. Whenever somebody is able to create any action, this is life. Acting in whatever way, mentally or Action is life. Interesting. If you don't act, then it's not life. Uh, and you still think? You don't act on a physical level, but your mind is still acting. So when your mind is unconscious, no life. Well, she got my question correctly. Yes, technically, if you are unconscious, you are still alive. Yes. yes. So, the, where is the activity then? This is the question. The vibrant energy. Huh? Energy, which is vibrant. Can you see that? You don't need to see it. No, can you see that or not? We can see it. Oh, can, can you see the vibrant energy in me? Of course. What? what, what? I'm, I'm blowing. No, no, if you are fast asleep, yeah, you're warm. I'm, I'm fast asleep then? We're still warm, you're breathing. Warm is the vibrancy. Is what I'm saying? That's energy. Then sun has the energy. Of course. Sun has the light. Yes. No, we talked about essential life. So this is already discussed. You have to be a good listener, are you getting it? You're a good listener. Yes. Yeah. 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 Okay, Shweta. Yes. Yeah. 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 Okay, in the text it says, so me say to me, I'm shaking my email. This is the, this is from Abhidhamma Kosh. What is life? Life, so, so me say, life is the basis, is the agent of the basis, Tedani, I'm shaking my so me say to me, I'm shaking my this is this agent which serves as a support for the, the the body heat and the consciousness. Is the agent agent which is the support for the body heat and the consciousness. 
Body heat. Life is the support. Yes. Life is the agent, which is the support, which is the support of the body heat and the consciousness. So there we have I'm alive, as you said, I have a body heat and I have a consciousness. Right? Moment, this life is gone. Life is gone, consciousness is ejected, and the body heat disappears. My body becomes like any other inanimate objects. Sorry? Okay, for the aquatic animals. For the aquatic animals, the water also has the heat. Heat doesn't mean hot. Right? Heat may, may not necessarily be 30 degree or 40 degree centigrade. If it's 10 degree centigrade, also there's the heat. Zero degree centigrade also has the heat. So the respect of minus zero degree so warm. Yeah. Okay, good. <clears throat> okay, we're almost done now. So tomorrow we can easily finish. Any questions before we? Yes, Mandula. Yes. Okay, other person here, what exactly is this ignorance? Ignorance of the first link. This ignorance, other schools, keep aside Prasangika, others will point to the, the ignorance pertaining to the second level of the misperception of the second level of the selfhood, which means ignorance viewing the self to be autonomous, substantial, real. Yes. So, this, so elimination of ignorance then uh, all agree that elimination of ignorance will lead to Wonderful, amazing, yes. Right. So, ignorance lesson, it is the first link ignorance. Ignorance, there are so many kinds. Yeah. First link ignorance, yes. So, in that way, the other schools are agreeing that, for example, the third level of, uh, for example, the Chitamatra and the. Uh, uh, okay, those schools? They agree that uh, the second level continuous is only required for uh, V1. Oh, very good question. Okay, so the lowest schools, not only each of the mantra, keep aside Prasangika, Savatanda Madhimika, okay, Vaibhashika, Sotrantika, Chitamatra, Madhimika, within Madhimika there are two, Prasangika, Savatanda Madhimika are two. Keep aside Prasangika, all the other schools, they say that the ignorance which views the self to be autonomous substantial real is the first link ignorance of the 12 links. First link. So, to achieve liberation, to achieve nirvana, one has to get rid of this ignorance. To get rid of this ignorance which views the self grasping ignorance, ignorance which views the self to be autonomous substantial real, to remove this ignorance, what should we do? If my job, if I tell you I need to help, I need to help, I want to get rid of the ignorance which views the autonomous substantial real. What should I do? What will you advise me? Yeah, say it again, say it again. That you have to understand, you have to build the wisdom to know that, know the emptiness of autonomous substantial reality. You're getting it? Okay. So therefore, this emptiness of autonomous substantial reality falls of the five levels, it is only the second one. You get it? So low schools, they said that you understand the second level of the emptiness. This will help you to get rid of the, the first link, ignorance of the twelve links. Once you remove that, you will achieve nirvana. So therefore, the low schools, meaning, keep aside Prasangi, all the other schools say that to achieve nirvana, you don't have to realize the higher levels of emptiness. We just realize the second level of emptiness or the second level of selflessness that is good enough to take you to nirvana. This is the lowest school's position. Yes, all the correct. Right. Very good, thank you. Yes, Raviji? Uh, can you exactly define what is autonomous substantial reality exactly means? Okay. What, exa what exactly does mean? Maybe a definition of it. A definition of autonomous substantial reality. 
Okay, what exactly is autonomous substantial reality? Okay, this <laughs> okay from Narendra Master's course, anybody? Remember the Dr. Anandaji? And then here, Chandila, our Chandaji? It's like a pilot in an airplane. So you, uh, you imagine yourself, uh, if you are looking at a person, you imagine yourself as a pilot and it is uh, directing the plane. So it, it's not actually the whole plane but it, it uh, serves as a chief of, uh, uh, it serves as a driver for the whole plane and the plane is dependent on the pilot. Just now give it this example, so how would you apply this to the self? The self is uh, has as a substance and it is uh, independently uh, autonomous means independent 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 exists uh -huh. from the past. so how is how is it like the pilot so all what's the pilot what's the pilot in this meaning and what is the 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 aeroplane in this meaning the pilot is like the self yeah aeroplane is like the aggregates yeah yeah. So, the part is governing the aggregates, this is what it's yeah. saying. The self is governing the aggregates, this is what it's saying. Yeah. Self doesn't govern the aggregates or not? Yes. It governs. So, therefore, it's no, not, no, it, it, is not, it, is not, it is not ignorant, it is valid. But it's. Uh, okay, Dr. Yes, Madam Pratana. Seeing something as autonomous uh, substantial means to see. Without depending on other factors. Okay, seeing the self as autonomous substance reality means seeing the self as independent of other factors. Seeing independent of other factors means seeing the self as without depending on other factors. This is the same. Seeing the self as not depending on other factors. Is it, is it, is it number, is, is this number two? Or is it number 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 three, number four, number five, or number one? So this the self independent self not dependent on other factors can be understood as number one. Self to be permanent, agrees to be impermanent, not dependent, number one. It also can understand number it can also refer to number two. It can also refer to number four, not number three. Number four, number five. So this is quite ambiguous, you have to make it clear. So, I'm going to break it up, autonomous and substantial. Yes. So, autonomous means autonomous, uh, independent of aggregates. Okay, so independent of aggregates. Aggregates will be autonomous. Now, substantial versus putative self. Putative self, by definition, putative means something that uh, requires the help of other factors to define it. Putative uh, versus substantial. Substantial okay. can stand alone. Yes. For example, mental consciousness, according to Swatantrika Madhyamika or other Madhyam schools, stands alone without other factors required to define it. However, putative would be something that needs the support of other factors. For example, India Gate would requires many things to say that this is India Gate. Right? Uh, but or anything, I mean, just take something. Putative. Yes, yes, yes. So, putative, so defining it this way would mean autonomous substantial means independent of aggregates and stand alone without any factors required to, uh, to define would be autonomous substantial self. So for example mental consciousness in their yes, would be autonomous the substantial it does not require aggregates, it does not require something else to define it to stand alone by itself. So therefore it's substantial. Okay, the Ravish, you should be happy. Are you happy? The definition seems to exactly what, what is uh, made by an objective person. Okay, that's true. Wow. Okay, so how Toda Anandaji defines it or understands it is the way one understands objective existence. So, what's the difference between number two emptiness and number five emptiness? These two people are the same. Okay, Arjanaji. No. Stanzilla? No? 
Okay, anybody else? Okay. So now, uh, Ravi, what do you want? You want just a definition? Yes. Okay. An object, an object, which can be identified, which can be identified. Oh, we are not defining the empty of objective existence. We are no empty of autonomous substance. We are defining. The, we are not defining the emptiness of of the word autonomous substantial reality. We are not defining the emptiness of that. We are defining the opposite of that. We define the opposite of that, which is autonomous substantial reality. We define that and then the emptiness will we have to add. Autonomous substantial reality is a phenomenon which can be identified independent of identifying another object. How is that different from? <laughs> okay, an object which can be identified, which an object which can be identified independent of identifying other objects. An object which which can be identified independent of identifying other objects. Okay, so for the total analysis, I did not add, I did not say anything, good, bad, correct, not correct, 100%, 20%, I did not say anything. I simply said, Ravich, are you happy with this? And he put the debate that this is very similar to understanding the entrance of checking systems. You're getting it? So, total analysis, I don't, I don't want to go into the controversy. The controversy is that it is very similar to the entrance of checking systems. How would you distinguish the two? I don't want to end up there, I give my own version, right? And you can put the same debate on me also. Okay, so how these two, what Dr. Anandaji explained, and the emptiness of objective existence, how these two are not the same? How these two, two differ in subtlety? This is the question. Okay, any more questions? Any more questions? Uh, why is uh, dependent arising not ultimate truth? <laughs> I'm sure Dr. Anirajji persuaded Shandila to say this. <laughs> Dr. Anirajji must have told Shandila that I asked this question to Gishala and he's not ready to explain it. You asked it. Right? Shandila, Shandila so innocently asked. She knows that, you know, I'm not going to answer, but give it a try. How? <laughs> okay. What is found by the ultimate analysis is the ultimate truth. What is found by the conventional analysis is the conventional truth. Ultimate analysis, what does it find? It found, it found the empty subject existence. This is what is found by the ultimate analysis. The conventional analysis will and dependent originations are found only by the conventional analysis. It is not, it is never found by the ultimate analysis. Still, you can ask more questions. If you are want me to ask, I will ask. Third, one. Huh? third level of dependent origination. How same, 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 same. Third level how? of dependent origination. Third level of dependent origination is also the, the is found by conventional analysis. So these two are the two sides of the same coin. If these two are identical, we cannot say these are two sides. Two sides means these two are not identical. But these two are with the same object, with two different isolates. But whatever is one is the other. So if you look... Uh, uh, no, that's not true. Whatever is the one is not the... Then what is it? Dependent mean? origination is not emptiness. Emptiness is dependent origination. But dependent origination is not emptiness. What qualifies, what has the attribute of emptiness should have the attribute of dependent origination. What has the attribute of dependent origination should have the attribute of emptiness. Yeah, it, it's a little more, yeah. Yes. So there are the nuances there. That is why emptiness is a little bit, because dependent origination is emptiness, but emptiness is not. Yes, that's, that's true. No, emptiness is dependent origination. Dependent origination is not emptiness. If you want me to ask more questions, I'll ask. Uh, shall I ask a question? Uh, if I ask a question, don't expect an answer from me. Uh, yes. 
Yes, yes, yes. Okay. The the form what form is empty meaning what is seen as a form is not objectively real, it is empty. What is seen as empty is not true nothingness, it is form. The two truths are explained. Once the two truths are explained, we have the we have the feeling that for the boys, girls, as dichotomous. As dichotomous. Boys, girls, dichotomous. Red, non-red, dichotomous. Human beings, non-human beings, dichotomous. We got a feeling that these two are just opposites. Conventional truth, ultimate truth. Then the answer is no, it is not like the boys and non-boys. It's not like the girls and non-girls. It's not like human and non-human beings. These two are the, these two are the two truths of the same object. Do you understand this? Same object is seen in two different ways. Do you understand this? Then the third and the fourth lines are added. Okay, any questions? Any more questions? Only the only the very interesting questions. Yeah, not only questions, very precise understanding. Yes. Actually, there's one question. Yes. Page number seventy-two. Yes. 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 There are four links that serve as a cause for assembling the four dependent Yes. Are these four the only causes? Which one? Which one? Para two. Para two. Yes. The last two lines. Last three lines. Which four? Namely, ignorance, craving, karma, and consciousness. Yes. So that's one, two, three, and. Okay, this is ignorance is one, craving is eight. One, two, three, and eight. No, no, no. Okay, okay. You are faster than me. Ignorance. I'm trying to follow the the text. According to text is number one, eight, two, and three. So in others, one, two, three, and eight. Yes. Grasping with the craving, with the craving, intense vibration is the grasping. So if you explain one, then it's good enough. What about becoming? Becoming is the karma. This karma is going to be germinated by the craving. So it's not karma. Two, two or ten. No karma. When you say karma, it qualifies both. Number two, and number ten. Karma. You don't say karma of number two. Karma of number ten. You don't say that. Then, then where's the level? Huh? Level is birth. Level is an effect. It's not the cause. Level is a produced. Yeah. Okay. Any more questions? Yes, Mandela. Yes. Ignorance. Ignorance which views things to be autonomous substantial real, self to be autonomous substantial real. Yes. But the mind and tenant actually causes emptiness of both self and phenomena. Okay, my and a tenant. My and a tenant, they are two. My and a tenant, they are two. What are they? Chita Mantra and Matemika. You getting it? So within my and tenant, they are. Again, we have to explain to two. One, which, which views the ignorance, misperceiving, or the ignorance, viewing things objectively real. Within Mahayana, this is Prasangika. Within Mahayana, Svata, the Mandala, and Chitta Mandala, these two will say, no, it is not that ignorance. Ignorance which views things as autonomous, substantial, real, which views the self to be autonomous, substantial, real. Within Mahayana, the system, again, there are two. Yes, so yes. Should, shouldn't uh, Chitta Mata and uh, at least it should be the number three, external reality? But not necessary. So the, uh, let's say that the, uh, okay, Nias, 
for the university. University is education system, right? Yes, no. It's the education system. Education system means class one is also education system. Kindergarten is also education system. So in the university, there should be at least a kindergarten there. Because university education system. In the education system, it's not only on the university. In the garden, in kindergarten is also there. So kindergarten must be there in the university system. No. Education system is a broad umbrella. Within that kindergarten system, school system, and university system, there are three. Likewise, say Mayan system is a broad umbrella. Within that, Prasangika, what we are talking about here is the Prasangika version of Mayana, right? Mayana, not all Mayana. But the same sutra can be interpreted by the Chetamatras. If it is the Chetamatra, the teacher, teacher will not interpret like the way, the way we interpret it. No, autonomous Autom substantial reality. The first thing, but first thing as autonomous substance real, be real, but then when explain the space like, space like, illusion like, explain all the of the, the steps are of phenomena, steps of person, steps of phenomena, steps of phenomena. Yes. Okay, revision. If a sugar shell was here, what happened? Ashka Gosha. Ashka Ghosh, yes, he was a student of, he was a student of Aridev. And Aridev was a great, great, great giant of the Mayana practice, Mayana philosopher, yes. Okay, we'll stop here. Deyata Om Gati Gati Oh, the